power for the next level. That's what we are going to be talking about this morning. As we prepare for the anointing of the Most High, we want to briefly talk about power for the next level. Second Kings chapter 2. We're going to be reading from verse 1 to verse 15. Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 15. Please, I want you to follow me, church. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. I want you to take note of that. They started their journey from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. I said, the Lord has sent me to the household of Bethel. And that word today will profit you in the name of Jesus. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha. And said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophet went. And they stood to view afar off. And they stood, and the two stood by Jordan. Those who are gathered to see what God will do for you. I pray that today the Lord will showcase himself. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided, either and dither. And so that the two went over on dry ground. For someone today, you are passing through. Amen. Every Jordan in your way, you are passing through. Amen. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Holy Spirit, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, when, if thou see me, when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. Amen. But if not, it shall not be so. Hallelujah. And it came to pass. As they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted boats asunder. And Elijah went up by wild into heaven. And what happened to Elisha? And Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes. And did what? And rent them in two pieces. And he took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the Jordan, by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smote the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had written the water, they parted it and did it. And Elisha went over. Verse 15, which will be the last one. Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophet, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, they changed their story. The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came 
to meet him and bow themselves to the ground before him. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Power for the next level. Beloved, I told us two weeks ago that the key to the next level is an understanding that God has not created you or me. He has not ordained us. He has not fashioned us to remain in the same state. To remain in the same position. To remain in the same level. To be dormant. That's the key to the next level. When a man does not understand that I am not designed, I am not created, I am not fashioned, ordained by God to remain in a state, that's when that awareness and that awakening will come up. Power for the next level. The two people that we see here, Elijah and Elisha, Beloved, the scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from verse 1, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is what? There is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. Let's start with Elijah. His season came in 1 Kings chapter 17. From verse 1. That's when this man of God suddenly came into the picture. Elijah the Tishbite. There was no mention of him before. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitant of Gilead. He just came from nowhere. God will introduce you. Oh, I said God will introduce you. When God introduced this man, look at what happened. He went to Ahab. Ahab happens to be an evil king. God wants to prove that I am still in charge. It does not matter which king is reigning and ruling. I am still the king of kings. And so God brought up Elijah. He went to introduce himself to Ahab. And look at what he said. As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year. But according to whose word? According to my word. I pray for someone that the power to distinguish you, the power to showcase you, the Lord will release upon you. The power to reign and to rule in your domain, Receive in the name of Jesus. Power for the next level. This man decreed, according to my word, there will not be rain, there will not be dew. Beloved, what happened? For three and a half years, there was no rain. For three and a half years. In verse six, in verse six, there was no rain. But God was constantly taking care of this man. The ravens will bring him bread in the morning and in the evening, fresh. Breakfast and dinner served. Beloved, when God is with you, he says, see that keep it Israel, neither slumber nor sleep. Is the one that will sustain you with corn, with wine, with oil, and with bread. Irrespective of what the economy is saying. Elijah the Tishbite. Amen. Now, when the brook dried up, the Lord told him, go to Zarephath. I have prepared a widow that will feed you there. When he saw the widow, he told her, does see the Lord. He prophesied abundance into her life. And the widow obeyed. That's not the message for today. But she obeyed. And the scripture says this widow and her son lived for many days after. Even though she was preparing in verse 14 to verse 16. Even though she was preparing their last meal. That they would eat and do what? And die. Praise God. They want to prepare their last meal and die. But God sent a man ahead of them. Power for the next level. 
which changed. You see, when the man of God came, this woman that morning did not know that her level is going to change. She went to bed and woke up and was preparing what I will call the final rites. Let me and my son just prepare this and enjoy ourselves and sleep in the Lord. But God has a next level for her of abundance. She did not know. Power. And God had to send a man that carries power into her life. I pray for someone again today. The power to reign and rule in your domain. Receive. In the name of Jesus. This same woman, the son died. Now, do you see why God sent Elijah to her? And all Elijah had to do was to say, God, this woman cannot feed me and you will kill his son. No. The son came back to life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is a power that is available in the Lord. There is a power that God can give that every other power will have to bow. Elijah, when he showed himself to Ahab, and he told him, now it's time for me to showcase the power of God. He says, go and call all the prophets of Baal, all your prophets, call all of them together. Amen. In uh, chapter 18 now. Praise God. He said, call all of them together. Let's see who is God. They gathered at Mount Carmel. And he says, the God that answered by fire, let him be God. When you carry power, all the prophet of God kept praying and shouting and cutting themselves. But nothing happened. I want you to know that there is a name that has been given each and every one of us. It is the name of Jesus. That name is power. And all Elijah had to do was to build an altar. He says, pour water on it. The first time, the second time, the third time. And he says, the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And the fire fell. Power for the next level. Amen. Amen. But let me now say this. For Israel at that time, they needed the next level. Hallelujah. Amen. With all that this man of God called Elijah did, God says, it is time for me to move my people to the next level. And God told him, go and anoint Elisha in your position. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In 1 King chapter 19, verse 16. 1 King chapter 19, verse 16. This is where Elisha came to the scene. The Lord told him, anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. God was ready to take the next level step to visit his people. I pray for someone that God will find you faithful Amen. for that next level anointing Amen. in the name of Jesus. It could still have been who? Elijah. But God said, no, it is time for me to take my power in the land to the next level. And it's going to be Elisha. Now, what did Elisha do? That's not the story today. But when he was anointed, when he received that mantle, the first call, the scripture says, the oxen he killed, the yoke he used them as wood to do what? 
to sacrifice. He was a successful farmer. But what he was telling God is that I am leaving all this behind. I am ready for my next level. It's not we're ready for his or our next level. Today, the Lord will visit you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to be giving us three or four points, talking about the next level power. So when we talk about the next level two weeks ago, we talk about three things. You want to move to the next level. Three things that you need to do. Number one, I say you must have a vision. A pictorial representation of where God is taking you to. You must see yourself. You cannot afford to see yourself sitting in the same place one year, two years, three years, four years, and you are saying God will do it. No. A pictorial representation. And number two, I said after that vision. You see, Caleb saw the land even before he got there. And by faith, 45 years after, he went to Joshua, give me this land. He aligned himself with the word of God. Those are the steps for the next level. But it is different for you to get to the next level and receive the next level power. Elisha was anointed. Amen. In that first king, chapter 19, verse 16, he was anointed. Now, when you go to our text today, all the sons of the prophet, 2 Kings chapter 2. The sons of the prophet from Bethel to where? And Jericho. Bethel, Jericho, and Jordan. They came to him. Do you know that your master is going to be taken away? The question is this. How did they know? Sons of the prophet. You are going to have people in your life. Brethren, brothers and sisters. Your own siblings or family member. That will tell you, do you know? But I'm here to tell you, what has God told you? They know where you are supposed to be, and so they are watching you. And so you need power. I said, you need power. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you need power. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What do you have to do? To receive power for the next level. Number one, you must be persistent. You must be what? Persistent. Look at this man, Elisha. Three times, the sons of the prophet. Now, let's break it down. Who are the sons of the prophet? This man did not go to theological school. He did not go to any seminary. And so, they knew that this one was not part of us. So where is it coming from? Who do you think you are? Oh, so you think by serving this man of God, something is going to come out of it. But he was persistent. Elijah told him, God has sent me to Bethel. He said, I am going to go with you wherever you go. From Bethel, he says, now it's time to go to Jericho. He said, no, I'm not leaving you. You want to receive the next level? Power. You must be persistent with God. Amen. I said, you must be persistent with God. Till the very end. You know, if, if you don't stay in Christ, outside of Christ is crisis. The sons of the prophets may appear as though they are doing fine. But we will see later that they were not doing fine. Persistence. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, from verse 4. Acts, chapter 1, from verse 4. Talking about the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says they were assembled together. Based on the instruction of Jesus, they were commanded that they should not depart from where? From Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of their father. 
Which promise are you waiting on? Which promise of God are you holding on to? I want you to be persistent. As you have heard of me. In verse 5, the Lord told them they should stay. Amen. He said, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days. Hence, they waited. They stayed. They tarried. No wonder in chapter 2 from verse 1, they received that visitation. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place, in one accord. And what happened? The Spirit of God visited them. Cloving tongues like fire sat upon each and every one of them. By the reason of anointing today, I pray for someone. God will change your destiny. I said, God will change your destiny in the name of Jesus. You must be persistent. Amen. You must be persistent. You must be persistent. Number two, because of our time, you must be focused. You must remain focused. Remain focused. Remain focused. Elisha could have been discouraged. Could have actually given up. I said, well, what's the use? This man is going to go away today anyway. And I have already been anointed as the next prophet in town. So let me go and start my ministry. See you, man of God. Yes, he's been anointed. And everybody knows, even the sons of the prophet were telling him, do you know that you are the next? It's time for you to begin to showcase the power of God. But you remain focused. Be, I want you to know, brethren, when God calls you and gives you an assignment, he will equip you. He's not going to send you empty-handed. God wants you to be a solution provider to your world. He will give you the skill, the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the know-how to be the best. Praise God. You must be focused. The sons of the prophet, three times they came to him. Do you know what is going to happen? He says, yes, I know. Hold your peace. You must be focused. You must remain focused. God is taking you to the next level where no one else except you. Where no one else has not been before like you. Even if someone else has been there before, that's not you. And so God wants to take you. Elijah was the prophet in town. And Elisha knew that. God has the next level for me. But I cannot operate. I cannot go and start my own ministry with the same level of power like this man. No, I need a double portion. And so it was focus. Power for the next level. And we saw in verse 7, the sons of the prophet gathered. They said, let's wait and see. But he remained focused on God. I want you to focus on God. I want you to do what? Focus on God. When your focus is on God, God is the one that will send his word into your life. Today, by the reason of the anointing, God will visit you. The scripture says in Psalm 107, Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word. He sent forth, actually, sent forth. The word of God will be sent forth today. Amen. Oh, I said the word of the Lord will be sent forth. Amen. That word will heal and will deliver you from every form of destruction. Amen. But you must be focused. Let your focus be on Christ, not on detractors, not on mockers. Number three, you must be alert spiritually. You must be alert in the spirit. Elijah told him, what you have asked for, a double portion, is a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taking away from you, then you will receive it. 
I know most of us know the word of the law. We know the will, the mind of God. But we need to stay alert in the spirit. Because when it's time to receive that power, I don't want you to be looking around. Amen. He knew that his master was going to be taken away. How? He didn't know. But this man stayed focused. He was alert in the spirit. Beloved, you must remain alert to take possession of your next level power. Now, what happened if, as the two of them were walking, he was not alert, he was not focused? When the chariot and the horses came, he said, my master, my father, I saw you. God must open your eyes. You want to move to the next level. You need power. Praise God. Let me give us one more. And then we'll begin to pray. When he took up the mantle, amen, he did something very, very important. He removed his own what? Garment. He did what? He rent it into two. You need to let go of the old glory, of the old garment, of the old you. For you to move to the next level. Are we together, church? You need to let go of the old. He rent his own garment in two. You must let go of your old limited self. You see, that old mentality, that idea... That keeps telling you, this is the ceiling of how far you can go. You need to let go. Because God wants to give you a new level. I said God wants to do what? Give you a new level. And in verse 19, when the power came, I said it earlier, the people who were gathered, the sons of the prophets, they came, they bowed down to him. Amen. The same mockers, when he received power, they bowed down to him and submit to his authority. And what happened? God changed his story. The same sons of the prophet that were at Jericho and could not do anything, they now came to him and said, Master, man of God, as you can see, we know that the Spirit of God is upon you. And this land, even though we have been here for so long, we are sons of the prophet, but we can't do anything. Do you know why? Because they lack power. Power to rule in your domain, receive in the name of Jesus. And he said, go and give me a cruise. Put a salt in it. And he spoke to the foundation, to the root cause. Says, henceforth, there shall be no more death. And that was it. I pray for someone. The level at which you have been operating before, may be good. In fact, it may be a better one. But there is the next level for you. I said, there is the next level for you. Power to open doors. God's anointing can be released through different means. When David was anointed king in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16, I believe verse 13, when he was anointed king, in the midst of his brethren, he was anointed with oil. 
but he did not take the throne. He was anointed as king of Israel, but Saul was still ruling at that time. Praise God. Amen. He did not take the throne until years later. In fact, by the time he took the throne, it was not the throne of Israel. It was that of Judah first. Amen. And it took another seven years before he now began to reign over Israel, after being anointed as king. What I want you to know is this. The anointing of God can bring power. The anointing of God can open door. The anointing of God can separate and distinguish you. But the question is this. What promises of God are you holding on to? What promises of God are you holding on to? You believe in God for healing? Physical healing, spiritual, emotional, material healing, the fruit of the womb, breakthrough in your career, in your finances, in your health, in your marriage. The Lord will send his word today. Amen. He sent his word. That word will come upon you. Amen. Beloved, God can never be late to visit you. You see, Anna has been going to Shiloh every year, but there was an appointed time that she met the man of God, Samuel. And all Samuel had to say is that, let it be unto you, according to your what? Desire, power. Let's rise up. Holy Spirit. The scripture says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Now, let me break this down here. For everyone that was anointed, even when Elisha was initially anointed, he was anointed as a prophet. But he did not receive that next level power until after his master was taken away. But talking of our Lord Jesus Christ here, yeah, the scripture says, Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? With the Holy Ghost and who? The Lord is going to anoint you. And by his anointing, power will come upon you. I said power to reign and to dominate. To rule in your domain. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Power for someone. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Joel 2, 25. Power for restoration. Mm. For someone. Power for restoration. All the years that the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar are stolen. Joel 2, 25. All those years will be restored. Power for restoration. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power, let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord If 
you have your anointing oil, please open it and lift it up. In that Second Kings chapter two, verse fifteen. Second Kings chapter two, verse fifteen. Make sure it's opened. The scripture says, when the sons of the prophets that were Jericho, they did not just think, they did not just imagine it, they saw and they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. And they came to meet him. And did what? And bowed themselves to the ground before him. Please lift up your anointing oil. Mount Shatan de Robo Centiria. What we are going to do by the word of the Lord is to prophesy. Now, whatever it is that you desire that the Lord will do for you. I want you to begin to pray and say, Lord, as your word will come upon this oil. Remember the scripture says, in our Psalm 107 verse 20, he did what? He sent his word. Yes, I may not be able to come and lay hands on you physically. I may not be able to come and anoint you physically, but I'm going to send the word of the Lord. And so what do you want this anointing oil to accomplish in your life? Which area of your life are you lacking power? Are you being tormented at night every time you lay down to sleep? Powers of darkness are oppressing you. They are tormenting you. And you can't do anything. You need power. In your place of work, they keep bypassing you for promotion. And yes, I know God will do it. But you need power to rule and to dominate in your own domain, in your career, in your business, in your finances, in your health. He says, none of the diseases of Egypt will I lay upon you power to command. The man Elisha knew, I am going to take over from this man, but I cannot operate at the same level of power. I need a double portion. No wonder, immediately, when he received power, Jordan parted for him. He spoke into the life of Jericho. And the curse that Joshua, the man of God, placed over the land, he revoked it. You need power. Talk to the Lord. What do you want this oil? Ha, poskateribo. Malu brakatunde skotunda breketebushkaba. Hosanna in the Beloved, the Lord said to someone, By this anointing oil, 
I'm going to announce you to the world. I will announce you to the world. Beloved, you know, when a man is anointed, it's a sign that there is a task or an assignment, an announcement. And so the Lord said for someone, by this anointing, I will announce you to the world. The Lord also said to someone, I will make this year your best ever. Despite what you can see now, mm, despite what you can see now, I will make this year your best ever. The Lord also said to someone, by my anointing, I will change your story. Woo! I will change your story. Please lift it up. And I want to hear your amen. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you today. Because you have designated today as a day to visit us. To anoint us. Afresh and anew. Yes, we may not be able to lay hands physically. We may not be able to anoint people physically. But Lord, your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the beginning was that word. That word was with God. And that word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created, made, fashioned, and ordained by you. And so by your word, I decree. Your word that runs very swiftly. Let it go right now and turn every of this heart lifted up in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whether you are here physically or you are watching us, I decree that the oil or the hands that are lifted up, let them receive power. Amen. Let them receive the touch of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Our God anoint Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. I decree into this world and into every hand lifted up, receive the touch of God. Amen. Receive power Amen. to reign, Amen. to rule, Amen. to dominate in your domain, Amen. in your career, Amen. in your health. Oh, to rule over every manner of affliction, of oppression in the name of Jesus. By this oil, whatever you lay your hands upon, whatever you use this oil to touch, will receive power. Amen. Ah, for someone, the Spirit of the Lord says, By this oil, I will visit the foundation of your home. I will set it on fire. I will set it on fire. I will set it on fire and your glory will begin to shine. Amen. I decree and I prophesy that from today, every oil, whatever this oil will touch, and this hands that has been lifted up will begin to prosper. Oh, you will begin to move forward. You will begin to make progress in the name of Jesus. For someone, I decree. Every prophet of Bah, Milakush Ketunderia, that has been challenging the name of your God by the anointing of the Lord upon your life today, you will be victorious. You will be victorious. You will be victorious in the name of Jesus. While all eyes are closed, you are still lifting up the hoy. Maunde robo shatali. Nde ribri babulu skunda mo satan derie. The Spirit of the Lord wants me to pray for some category of people, and it has to do with the reports. Of men. It is the report of the doctors. I don't care what those reports are. We have a name that we have received. 
It is the name of Jesus. While you are lifting up the oil, if you are in such category, please lift up your hands. Oh, the Lord says, I will not allow any of the infirmity, any of the diseases of Egypt to be laid upon you because I'm the God that healed thee. For every of these hands lifted up, trusting you for healing, I send your word right now. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I send your word into their life, into their health. Receive bravo, Lebravo, receive healing. Cancer, hear the word of the living God. You are a stranger. I rebuke you. I denied you continuous access in this life. You are stranger, and strangers shall be afraid and run out of their hidden place. Get out! Whatever has been impacting and limiting your health, hear the word of the living God. I decree that your health will begin to flourish and prosper and blossom in the name of Jesus. Yes, for someone, I prophesy. That by this oil and your hands that is lifted, you will become fruitful. In the fruit of your body, you will be fruitful. For someone, the Lord says, though you may have been desolate, and no one thinks about you, you are an afterthought. The Lord says, I will make you an eternal excellency. Oh, I will make you an eternal excellency. Holy Spirit. I pray for that daughter of yours. Leketeria, bralabu, sukunde, muskata, brekete, muskata, nderebu. Every confederacy that is sitting over a greatness. I release fire. I release fire. Just like the God of Elisha, I release fire that they will be consumed in the name of Jesus. And from this moment, you will be married. Hey, you will be married. You will no longer be desolate. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit will worship you. Hosanna in the Brethren, what I want us to do when you get home, for every head of the home, you're going to anoint yourself with this oil, and you anoint your household. If your husband is not here in the country, you are here with your children, anoint yourself and anoint every of your children. Today, not tomorrow, please, when you get home. I decree once again. Because today is a special day. For me, it's a special day. And I decree a special blessing into your life. Amen. Hear the word of the living God. The Lord will make you relevant. Amen. Ah, God, who caused Elijah to become relevant, he will make you relevant. Amen. 
I decree divine establishment, divine settlement for someone. Amen. Yes. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I prophesy into the life of someone. Nerobo sheketilie bremo skunda rala tu skunde ribo sheketende riboski. Listen, beloved. You are living in fear. You are living in fear. And fear has torments. But the power of the Most High, I decree that every power of fear over your life is broken. Amen. The fear that has kept you bound, that has kept you locked, that has kept you from moving forward. I break that all over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord. Why don't you lift up your voice once again and begin to appreciate God. Appreciate God. Appreciate Him.